everyone! There are basic questions about COVID-19 that we should know. The origin of the virus, prevention and treatment, and how it affects mental health are just some of what we need to know. These chunks of information can protect us, our loved ones, and others from being infected. We cannot be complacent. Nothing beats hearing this information from doctors themselves. A health crisis is best led by those in the medical field. In this video, let's hear from Dr. Denny Sagdanan, who works at one of the busiest hospitals for COVID patients, the Philippine General Hospital. So stay with me. Hi guys, I'm very happy that uh, we have with us one of my good friends, uh, Dr. Dennis Sagdalan. He's an Atenean by the way, so parang parang dugo nyo lahat. And uh, he's, uh, of course, he's a doctor. And I think it is good for us to uh, hear from a doctor uh, things about our questions about COVID as we celebrate uh, Science and Math Month. <laughs> Kumusta? How are you? You just came from PGH, right? Yeah, hi, good evening, good evening, Father J-Boy. Yeah, I just arrived from EGH. Things have been a bit hectic the past few months, but the past six, six months, we've been designated as a COVID center. But yeah, thank you for inviting me, and I'm happy to speak. Ano yung makakasang mo sa PGH at COVID? As of now, it's, it's, really, it's really fluid, as they say in, the, in PGH. Nothing, nothing's permanent. So every week, there's always a change that happens in terms of um, the patient load and how we interact with each other in the department or with other um, departments, other doctors. PGH or the Philippine General Hospital has been divided into two hospitals. There's a non-COVID part of the hospital and there's a COVID part of the hospital. Our patient interaction mostly would be from ultrasounds when we do um, procedures on the patients. Basically, the, the changes in the in the hospital is really different right now. It's a very different hospital pre-COVID. Um, what do you feel when you see someone who has uh, COVID? I've never seen uh, an X-ray of their lungs. Technically now, when we see X-rays, you can't really rule out COVID. Because mm -hmm. COVID pneumonia has characteristics similar to normal pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Pneumonia is a blanket term, is an umbrella term. Um, pneumonia can can be bacterial, can be viral, can be caused by malignancies. And then now there's another species from the infectious or from the viral side, which yeah. is COVID. When we see X-rays and we see um, consolidations or or areas that are isn't normal looking for, for long, mm -hmm. um, you can't really say that it's not COVID. So whenever we see that, we immediately uh, inform the emergency med doctors or internal medicine doctors that this patient has um, suspicious findings for COVID. So then they do swabs or they do the RT-PCR yeah. to confirm. Um, there's a question here about um the different types of diagnostic tests used to detect COVID. What are these diagnostic tests and how effective are they? For the diagnostic tests for COVID, we have um, several modalities or, um, that we can choose from. So the first or the basic one is chest x-rays. Mm -hmm. Chest x-rays are used as a staple for screening. The guidelines really don't say that you have to get chest x-rays. The gold standard is RT-PCR, which is a swabbing. For emergency cases, we do emerge, uh, chest x-rays just to uh, screen if the lungs are clear. If we do have COVID-confirmed cases, there are different classifications or categories grading them. Um, the CORADS classification for CT scan, that's one to five for suspicious cases, and then COVID-6 is confirmed RT-PCR. These classifications are used when we do CT scan of the chest to assess the gravity of the extent of the, the disease affecting the lungs. So, um, so we have chest x-rays, CT scan, 
ultrasound can also be used to a lesser extent, at least for for the modalities within our uh, department. Those are the the four modalities that we use. But it's always beneficial, actually, to to compare all of these tests. Uh, yeah, actually, what was taught to us in medicine was medicine is is uh, is art. You know? So you have to be able to. Is it art? Art. Yeah, so that's why it's called the art of medicine. It's how you converse with your patient, how you converse with other doctors. For me, because I don't really see, I don't really get to talk to the patients because I only see the imaging. I only see the x-ray, the CT scan. So the art behind that is for me to be able to talk to the primary physician to get the clinical data that is necessary for me to be able to uh, arrive to a proper diagnosis. In terms of of being able to to diagnose, I really need to be able to see myself as uh, as part of a team of specialists. Yeah. So, for the conglomeration of the all the data coming from the clinical physician, even yeah. from visits, um, yeah. they all contribute to the diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. That's why it's an art because you put things together. It yes. cannot be confirmed with just one diagnostic test. Yes, definitely. You can't really say that just because an X-ray, so yeah. you see something, something's wrong with it. You just say it's COVID. No, no, it's yeah. not because it can be anything. So you have to confirm it with a pathologist, the RT-PCR. You have to confirm with a clinician with what they see. Is the patient yeah. dry? Is the patient is the patient having difficulty breathing? It is also the patient stories, right? Ah, uh, yes, yes, most definitely because. Without us being able to converse with the patient, without the patient telling us the doc, um, mayroon po akong kapit bahay, tapos dumalaw po siya sa bahay ko, ko may ubo. Or without us being able to to find, to investigate and to to learn those in those minute information, we won't really be able to say that okay, we're gonna have this person is suspicious for COVID. Uh, let's do the tests that would point out or that would flush out um, this disease or rule out this disease. Um, there are many theories about its origin. In fact, recently, uh, it said it's manufactured in a laboratory in Wuhan, all of those things. How about you guys? When you, when you read all of this uh, news, um, in your own assessment, how did COVID-19 emerge? COVID is a combination of two, basically two viruses. So you have this, that's why the, it's really called SARS-CoV-19. Mm-hmm. So the SARS virus, Yes. during the early 2000s, if the SARS virus then was basically this, had the same characteristics as this virus, except that this one is more potent. It, the, the virulence of this, of this virus is like 10 times worse than that one. That's why they say that it's a combination of the SARS virus and this COVID virus that combine. So that's one of the, the theories. Can that be manufactured? I mean, can you actually com- combine viruses? I've seen doc- documentaries, quote unquote, explaining that there were there are like labs in, in China that manufactured it for biological purposes. But in, in our day and age, it's not far-fetched. I'd call it a, uh, a theory at best. One of the things that you hear about uh, prevention is what we call the steam therapy or the two-ob or the inhalation therapy. Siyempre, pinagtatawanan, di ba? Alam mo naman, kahit galing sa Cebu, like, maybe the best question would not be, epektibo ba yun? Or kung effective yun, bakit siya effective? Or what would be the best way to, to help you not get the virus? Actually, I, I tried to I tried to research about it when I first read about it. What whatever will will give the person uh, the sense of comfort or safety blanket that they think is it will work for them. Uh, do it in moderation, or if they think that after doing it, so I don't feel that well, stop it, And don't push it. But the basics should remain that you should always wash your hands wear a mask, and then avoid contact with um, people as much as possible. Uh, social distancing. Yeah. But aside from that, if, if they feel that they need to take a bath, 
three times, four times a day, or they need to to do that too often. It'll not hurt. <laughs> it won't hurt. It won't hurt to try it out. It won't hurt to to do it. Do it within the confines of reason. Yeah. Don't drink alcohol or don't sniff alcohol. Don't don't try to don't try to be a scientist or a medical or, specialist. Or use gasoline just because somebody said it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Let Let's all be reasonable at this juncture in our time. Let's not test the waters too much. Let's try to listen to the advice of medical specialists. Yeah. So with the psychological thing, di ba? Um, ang Asian medicine kasi um, takes into consideration not just test, but also um, the the spiritual part, di ba? May may ganon eh. May ano tayo sa um, spiritual life. Eh. So that all of these contributes to your wellness, well-being. to your overall uh, well-being. When we talk about um, healing, nakakapraning din ng COVID sa toto lang. So, how does the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, affect one's mental health? Definitely, Father, it has really affected a lot of people. You know? yeah. especially, especially doctors, healthcare workers, nurses, frontliners. In the way that even for us in PGH, we have a hotline with the psychiatric department just for residents or the um, doctors to to share their grievances, their fears. Because a lot of the doctors in PGH came from other parts of the country. They couldn't go home to their parents, they can't go home to their families to assure the safety of the, their, their loved ones. Being stuck at home for let alone six months is really maddening. I'm really, at least I'm lucky for my profession as a physician, I get to go out. I get to, yeah. to see other people. But for other people who don't really have anything, any reason to to leave the house, di ba? Parang you just, you're just stuck there doing a cyclical routine. You're like a person in prison. Just to be confined in your own room or in a small space, talagang nakakabaliw talaga. Especially yung mga people who lost their loved ones from, to COVID, who can't yeah. even give them a proper burial that's one of the worst things that you can that you can feel diba? Parang we have I, I know a lot of doctors who both their parents passed away from covid and probably the reason is they got exposed to to them it really takes a toll on, on our on our mental on our spiritual um, well well-being so it's not a it's not a joke. This COVID virus is not a joke. Having said that, if we look at the current situation of the Philippines, what can you say about where we are in terms of curtailing the pandemic? Do you think it has been managed well? I wanna answer that uh, question though, but never mind, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I personally I think we could have done better. We could have done better as a as a country. We had all the red flags. We had all the signs pointing out that this will end up badly. And yeah. yet, a lot of people, higher ups, um, turned a blind eye. Things could have been managed better. Especially now that the people who are technically calling the shots aren't really medical specialists. They're not really medical specialists. Yeah. So they know a lot about managing people commanding people but this is not war this is a medical emergency we have to have people who know the enemy those people who are leading us now really don't know what they're doing they just believe whatever people tell them but those people aren't really specialists it's like the blind leading the blind yeah it's very very frustrating yeah Uh, there is no alignment vis-a-vis the issue so if you have a medical emergency, a health crisis, you need a medical expert, right? Yes. If it is about security, then you need a military. But uh, sadly, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who say it's easy to criticize. Because you're not, you're not the one in in position. But you don't need to be a specialist at this point to say that something's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to be an expert to say that. The six months that has passed, we're we're going somewhere. No, six the, the past six months we're still in the same hole that we're we were in the, since March.
what would be your message to to my student who have uh, who have relatives who are frontliners or people whom they know uh, who are frontliners who are currently fighting against COVID-19 or even a message for your fellow frontliners at least for for your students i think the one of the best things that we can do for for their parents or for their loved ones who are frontliners is to to message them or to, to talk to them as much as they can. Um, this is not only for for the students' welfare, but the welfare of the mental health of their loved ones as well. Because it's really difficult to be out, to be away from your family. It's really difficult to think about taking care of your other people who you don't know, and then think about how your loved ones are doing as well. And then another thing that they can do is for, for them to always find someone or an outlet where, where they can share their feelings, where they can express their, their worries. We have to, find, we have to adapt to, to, the, to the times. We have everything that technology can offer us. We have Zoom or we have um, text or vibe, other chat groups. So we can use that as a, as a medium. To, to be able to communicate our our feelings because it's okay to be weak at this point. Everyone's weak at this point. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. The drama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Book talk is a, is a very very um, potent um, help for many people who are suffering um, psychologically, uh, emotionally. Nothing beats saying hi to someone, right? Sabi nga nila, ang kumustahan ngayon ay medisina na rin. Yes, definitely. Diba? Even pay your father. Diba nga, in atin yun, we're taught to, to, to do self-discernment. We're, we're taught to find your silent your silent corner. Talk to God in that in that silence. Yeah. So, those those are those are things that I do. At, um, I'm thankful for because I was taught in atin yun to do those things. Um, just being quiet, stay lying down in your bed before you sleep, thinking about your day, being thankful that you had another day, you're not feeling any sickness. Those are things that you can do uh, individually to, to make sure that we keep ourselves in check. Oh, sige. Ano yung ano ang dapat kailangan? Go! <laughs> Definitely wear your mask all the time. And not only any mask, don't wear the cloth masks. Wear the surgical masks or the N95s, the ones that are prescribed by yeah. the guidelines. Um, wash your hands every time you step out. When you when you get back, wash your hands. You take a bath when when, when you get exposed with a lot of people. Um, minimize exposure to other people. Keep social distancing. So by that that way, we will be able to help also um, our frontliners, right? Yeah. So once again, maraming salamat, Dr. Denny Sagdalan. Thank you very much. This would be a great help, especially for my students in senior high school. Thank you very much again, Dr. Denny Sagdalan, for spending time with us. I know you just came from active duty before this interview. We'll pray too for your family, Dr. Marian and your son, Jego. And to all of you, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. This is Father Jboy on the line. I'll see you next time.